up on the Facebook page. How are we doing? Are we actually live now? We should be. We should be? Let me see. Try to pull up my screen so I can read your comments while we do the Facebook Live. It's always great to talk to you guys. We are testing out some new video and like audio uh, setup to be able to uh, talk to you guys. And we want to do more of this live interaction as much as possible. Here we go. So I should be able to read the comments uh, hopefully as we go. If you guys have any specific interests, let me know. When I asked on Massage Entrepreneurs, that's a Facebook group. If you haven't joined that, you can, by the way, uh, especially if you're a therapist. People were asking about in-person events and networking. And I was actually taken aback that that was the number one request out of everything I could talk about. I think that myself, um, that's one of my weakest links. And one of the reasons it's my weakest link is I don't typically sell what people would think of as massage. Um, I'm in a situation where the information that I'm delivering, the body work that I'm selling, what I am offering to the community, uh, takes away table cream, glide, and nudity. And when you take away the table, the cream, the glide, the nudity, they're like, I don't understand, what is this? That puts me in a unique position where I've used social media as leverage to be able to film what I do and then distribute content directly to you. Uh, our subscription service goes directly to you. My workbooks and retail packages, DVDs, go directly to you. Um, if I set up at an event, I want you to understand from my perspective what I deal with with in-person events and networking. I like working with people, but if massage therapists are going to go to a facility and show off their work, they're typically going to do chair massage. And doing chair massage means you're going and you're working for free or for very low cost and you're handing out business cards. From my standpoint, the chair massage is almost the giveaway. Hopefully you're making some money doing it, but mostly you're trying to get people into your funnel organically to be able to sell them a session or package of sessions. What I did in the form of networking, when I say I'm not good at it, you have to you know, put that in perspective. Uh, seven years ago, I created an event called Time Massage Jam that's run continuously in Austin for the last seven years. We now have 12 chapters nationally, including Las Vegas, St. Louis, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Denver, Colorado, and numerous chapters here in Texas. What is happening at the Time Massage Jam is instead of going to other people's event and networking, I created my own event where I got to be the DJ and play music that I liked. And I got to set it up the way I wanted to set it up. So what I do to network is I needed people to understand what I was doing. I needed people to look at what I was offering and be able to share that information with their friends, family, colleagues, the people who would be purchasing the service. Because massage therapists were in a, a, in a place, so to speak, where they weren't really doing Thai massage, uh, to my knowledge, at all in Austin at the time, this is seven plus years ago, what I started doing was I ran the Thai massage jam to bring people to me. Those eight to 10 people, instead of doing just massage on them, I teach them to do the massage and I get them to work on each other. And I'm still there to work on them, but they're also there to work on me. Because now, instead of this ivory tower of I'm the massage therapist, you're the peon, you're the public, you don't know anything, I said, no, why don't you to come and let me show you? I'll show you how to work on your friends, family, loved ones. What happened was <clears throat> there was a polarizing effect. And that polarization meant that there were some massage therapists who didn't like the event because they said, well, you know, these people don't have a license. And I said, but they're not charging. They're just working on friends, family, and loved ones. This is no different than hosting um, 
a couple's massage class where you're teaching them how to work on each other. When that class is over, they're going to want to book sessions with the professional. I've tried to explain this numerous times. Um, the jam is actually growing, but it worked better for me in my case to create my own event as opposed to going to someone else's event and trying to convince them that I was somebody and trying to give them business cards or get their email address to put them on my email list. I did much better at hosting that and setting up a situation where I could share directly with my potential target market clients to be able to create a community. And here's what happened. You create community and then it funnels business. What I see massage therapists doing is they spend too much time focusing on sales. They spend too much time focusing on, well, how do you make money? So here's the thing. I'm doing a Facebook Live from my business page. We just went over 10,000 likes on my business page. On Massage Entrepreneurs, which is a Facebook group that I run, there are 13,000 massage therapists. Those massage therapists are regularly posted videos that come through my feed. They're regularly posted information about my retail package. They're regularly posted links to my subscription service. And we continue to build that group as a funnel, meaning the people who are on it are, are seeing information about me. Now, I allow other people to sell their stuff there. I allow other people to market themselves. I allow other people to share advice and information because we created a community resource online. Massage therapists spend too much time trying to sell and not enough time trying to give. And when I say that, I don't mean in session. I mean, if you make a YouTube video and you teach someone where the origin insertion is on their bicep, you are now a medical professional. The public does not know musculoskeletal anatomy. They don't know what we know as massage therapists. I think that you do best putting out information in a way of building community that draws people into your story. Now, if 100 people become part of your community, it doesn't mean that all of those people become clients. What it means is those 100 voices have friends, family, loved ones. There are people who have come to the Time Massage Jam. My jam, uh, by the way, we charge $5. I had someone call me one night. She had a horrible uh, car accident. She had $20,000 in medical bills. She can't afford anything, but she heard about me from someone. I said, listen, you know, it sounds like you can't afford anything. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just broke. You know, she's, she's destitute. She's frustrated. I said, listen, the time of size jam is $5. And she goes, what's that? She comes to the jam. I work on her for nearly free, by the way. She pays five bucks to come to the jam. But I work on her for free for an hour as part of my event. Now, she continues to come to the jam a year later because we built community first. And it's not about getting her as a client. It's about getting her as a fan, as a follower, as part of an ardent community that shares my videos, likes my content, connects with me, and builds larger community connections. Most of what you're trying to do with networking, whether it be online or in person, is you're trying to work with people, you're trying to talk with people, you're trying to get information from them so that you can connect them again. And when I say information, you want them to follow you on Instagram. You want them to follow you on email, uh, get an email list. When I did a recent event with Tim McCoy, Tim McCoy is a great practitioner here in the Austin area. We work together regularly. Uh, Tim told me about an event. It was at the Thinkery. Uh, you can see the video on our YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, Trent shot that. It was like two and a half hours of me doing essentially our version of chair massage. I didn't know what was happening with the event. I just knew that Tim wanted me to show up and support what he was doing, so I did. What wound up happening was I gave away work for two and a half hours. But all of the practitioners were mat-based and all of the practitioners were working on a mat. All of the practitioners were using their legs and feet and people were going, hey, what's this? Wow, this looks different. And that's why I think mat-based work is part of the future of the industry. The other portion is we're working completely clothed. Much like chair massage, you have a distinct advantage in the fact that in networking circles, you can work on people and still be clothed. You can't really do that as easily with massage where people are dealing with options uh, related to nudity. So when it comes to networking, um, I'll give you an example of the stuff I'm not good at. 
I'm not good at going to a dinner party and rubbing elbows with people and trying to convince them that I'm someone. So I don't do it. I'm not good at going to doctor's offices or physical therapist offices and saying, hey, I'm Robert Gardner, I help people in chronic pain. And they're like, really, what do you do? And I say, oh, I do high, high grade manual therapy for three hours with a suspension system and abdominal work on a mat. And they go, wait, what? It's harder for me to get medical professionals to listen because they simply have no frame of reference for how I'm helping people deal with manual therapy. Um, so I don't tend to do that. If you go to a doctor and say, hey, I do massage, I think part of the challenge is, why do they think what you do is any different than any other massage therapist? Because I don't find that many in the public really respect massage as a whole because they're just not that impressed with it. So Trent, do you know how, how do I see the comments here? Is, uh, there, is there a way to do that on my laptop? Because yes, I don't see it. Let's uh, see here. If I can change this. I think that Facebook is holding back the comments. Why? I'm not sure. Why are you not giving me my, my comments? <laughs> Let's see. Because I can't, I can't see my, my mobile device. That's okay, well, let me see if I can pull it up on my phone. Because I want to be able to answer people's questions as we go. I had the same issue last time, remember? Where Facebook was holding back the comments, and I'm not sure why. Okay, guys, if you're there, you can go ahead and give me some feedback if you have specific questions. I want to see if we can get this to pull up, because if I cannot get the questions to pull up, that's going to be greatly limiting uh, what we're doing here. I want to be able to talk with you uh, directly as you're asking questions, and I've got you on my phone as well as my laptop, but none of them are picking up uh, comments for me to see. So, uh, like I said, I don't do really well going into people's establishment and trying to convince them. Um, what I do really well is making my own community, which is Massage Entrepreneurs online on Facebook, and is making my own community, which is the Time Massage Jam here in Austin that we're scaling out. I do much better creating my own digital hub through my social media channels than I do going to people in person and I walk in looking like the dude from the Big Lebowski and they expect me to smoke a joint and drink a white Russian because I just don't look like a professional. I'm wearing Thai fisherman pants and t-shirts. Uh, half the time I've got a Gary V shirt on. People are a little suspect about what I do, but my clients love it. Uh, the students actually teach love it. The people I'm working with online love it. It's just everybody else is skeptical because they've never seen anybody actually be an individual in our industry and do things differently and think for themselves and be a free thinker and continue to tweak and morph. Like for me to say that I've created my own service to other people is sort of absurd. They've never seen anybody do that. You know, I've never seen it where it does this and it doesn't show me any comments at all. Uh, if you open up the video on the app, then the comments should be coming in there. But just make sure. That Let me see if I can turn the, the volume all the way down. There we go. We'll see if any of them pop up. So if you guys do have questions, let me know. And I want to see if this actually pulls up any comments from you guys. Dealing again with in-person networking, uh, people are regularly asking about business cards or they're asking about uh, flyers, brochures. I don't think those things are dead, um, but I also think they don't have the same ROI that they used to. Uh, paper costs, if you're shipping brochures in the mail, that costs. The reason I like uh, Instagram is it's digital and it distributes extremely inexpensively, meaning free. Um, I'm not denying the power of having a business card, but I told someone recently that if I had a business card, which I don't right now, by the way, if I had a business card, I would have my snap code on the back so people could follow me on Snapchat. And immediately somebody said, what's snap code? And I went, uh, here we go. Uh, we have to deal with marketing in the era that we live in. If you are not on social media channels putting out your information, I am a little suspect of your business and if it's not dead right now, it might be dead within 10 years. The entire industry is morphing. Uh, people do not understand even how I'm delivering educational information and content via subscription service. Uh, mark my words, wait around, other people will soon be running subscription services because they'll figure it out. Everything we're doing 
in helping students run funnels, when we talk about networking. Um, I'm working with Robin Johnson here in Austin. I'm working with Kristen Lumsden. I'm working with Bradford James in Colorado to set up funnels that allow them to collect an email, to put people through a sort of course that allows them to get information from people, to funnel those people through their social media and also for them to build an email list so that they can contact those people directly. I'm a big fan of email. You'll notice that I keep morphing back uh, between digital and like organic marketing. I'm a big fan of digital. Huge fan. Um, this is Hollywood that allows me to control my message. I'm in my studio. There's a fan on. I'm literally talking to a phone right now. The technology is in your hands, but you actually have to use it. There's a comment, I just can't see it. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. So, in-person networking, when I think about going to a business association, when I talk about the Better Business Bureau, when I think about those things, being in a room with a group of people, unless it's very distinct, uh, seems a little bit more complex to me and it's admittedly not my best. I think the massage therapists on the whole are horrible at creating community. And if that makes you angry, well, it's just gonna have to make you angry. So, uh, Wendy, when you're asking about um, what do you call yourself other than a massage therapist? Here's what I see with the students that are studying with me long term. The students who are studying with me long term are starting to catch on to the fact that I'm trying to get them to deliver a service that doesn't really resemble what they were taught in school and it doesn't resemble what the public is currently being sold as massage. That means that they get to the point where you are where they're trying to figure out, well, what do I call myself? I long term am trying to find a trademark so that we can give you a brand should you decide to work with me and get certified. And certification does mean something, contrary to my friends on the massage internet who think there's a difference between big C certification and lowercase c certification, because lowercase c certification still stands for something. What I would say, Wendy, is for the time being, if what I would call myself depends on who I'm trying to market the service to. Um, I know therapists in the industry right now who are calling themselves mobility coaches. Now, if you're a mobility coach, you're probably much more likely to be working with athletes. Because athletes need to be mobile, right? Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. I like that. Um, athletes need a coach, right? Because, uh, yeah, I'm an athlete. Of course, I'm supposed to have a coach. I guess having a mobility coach would be great. Mobility coach has no legal distinction within the United States. Most states in the United States are regulating the practice of massage, which defi is defined state by state by its scope and practice. However, what's a yoga therapist? Ooh. Um, what is... Uh, Thai yoga, ooh. What is uh, manual therapy legally? And that's a little more gray. Um, I get regular information, uh, questions from people who are Pilates teachers, who are yoga teachers, and they want to do what I'm teaching. And I say, ooh, get a lawyer. And they say, but you can teach me, right? And I go, eh, yes, but can you do what I teach without a license? Now, if you call it stretch therapy and you open up stretch zone, you're exempt from all regulation in the United States. Welcome. Stretch therapy certainly doesn't manipulate soft tissue. I think you call yourself, Wendy, what your clients want to hear, which means uh, you want to be Mr. Pure Relief. Because as much as people don't like Mr. Pure Relief, Mr. Pure Relief, if you're out there, can you contact me? Because I'd like to make you a moderator on Massage Entrepreneurs, because you, sir, have hustle. And these therapists are lame, and they're not working on their social media, and they're sharing your video because they don't like it, not understanding that they're wrecking 
uh, Facebook's algorithm and actually showing your video to more people. Congratulations to you, sir. You are a wonderful, wonderful entrepreneur, which is we, what we need in massage entrepreneurs. What you call yourself, Wendy, is what's going to draw your clients in. If you called yourself, Wendy, let's say you worked on people who are in chronic pain. If you called yourself a pain specialist, so Wendy, you are no longer a massage therapist. You are now a pain specialist. What people are looking for pain specialists? People who are in pain, which means you're still working under your massage license. You're not breaking any laws related to marketing, advertising, sales, massage regulations, scope of practice. You're still delivering massage, but you're now a pain specialist. That's the sort of language that's going to draw in a target market. Um, I'm still selling my stuff under the rubric of Thai Massage because people at least have a little bit of idea of what Thai Massage is. Then when I push, people in my classes are going, wait, but Thai Massage is this. Thai Massage is that. They're like, that's not Thai Massage. And I went, wow. So I don't teach Thai Massage, but I wrote 700 pages of sequence manuals and nine DVDs called Thai Massage. And then after I used all of this basic biomechanical information, we developed a subscription service with another 350 hours of content on it where I teach people live worldwide for seven bucks a month. Now, what you call yourself is a matter of branding. Branding. Massage therapists won't create the services of the future, so they allow entrepreneurs to come in from outside and create them. Massage Envy is single-handedly responsible for helping create massage as something that is safe, that people can go to from a reputable, licensed establishment and get massage and body work. Massage Envy created that, not independent massage therapists. The more that I uh, try to light the fire under massage therapist's asses to get out and go do things, they say, no, but I was, you know, I was taught to do massage in school. And I'm like, okay, cool. The problem with selling massage, the problem with calling yourself a massage therapist is, are you ready for this? Are you going to be angry at me? Am I going to get hate mail? Because here's the thing. If you hate it, I need you to do something for me. Because just like Mr. Pure Relief, I need you to hate it enough to share it. It's not just enough to, you know, just to argue with me here, and I'm willing to debate you. I was a philosophy student. It's my one true gift. Bring it on. I need you to share it if you hate it and tell all your other friends that you hate it so I can find my audience so I can build and grow. Massage is a commodity. It's not a brand. Shoes are a commodity. Nike is a brand. Shoes are a commodity. Reebok is a brand. Adidas is a brand. Shoes are a commodity. A car is a commodity. A Ferrari is a brand. A Honda is a brand. A Buick is a brand. A car is a commodity. And are you ready? A massage is a commodity. Soothe is a brand. Zeal is a brand. Massage Envy, Massage Heights are brands. Massage is a commodity. That's why you want to brand, and that's why you want to build, and that's why you want to offer a distinct service. Do people go do CrossFit because they want to work out? No. People go do CrossFit because they want to go do CrossFit. Um, I shared something uh, yesterday on social media, and it was about some of the problems I see in the massage industry. And the post nearly went viral. I was actively taken aback at the number of people that were commenting on this thread. And what I noticed was I had achieved complete polarization. Uh, people were Democrats or Republicans. Uh, you remember uh, in Taoism, you got the yin and yang, and they, they fuse into each other, but it's a single totality that keeps expressing itself in polarization? Yeah. They had completely different opinions. Well, I've been working 18 years, and I'm doing fine. And this guy over here is like, I've been working for four, and I'm about to die. Like, I don't have any money. I'm broke. My hands hurt. How can both of those things be simultaneously true? 
The answer is the people who are doing just fine aren't drawn to my message. The people who are struggling are my students and I'll teach you for $7 a month. If you're having problems, I can teach you, but CrossFit polarizes the audience. CrossFit actively goes out and says, nope, we're not gonna run a gym. Nope, we're not gonna have an air conditioned facility. Nope, we're gonna not gonna make it nice. Nope, we're gonna use tires because we're the hardcore, we, are, we do CrossFit. The CrossFitters are like the vegans of the athletic community. They let everybody know that they're vegan. That sort of branding is what leads to increased sales and that polarization of the market means, in my case, the people who are doing fine go, we don't like what you're saying. Okay, I'm making plenty of money. Okay, well, these people are not, so I'm selling to them. So I need you to hate it enough to share it, but I need you guys to pick it up and use it. And we're, when we're in the Reboot Insiders Club, our private Facebook group that goes along with the subscription, the students are telling me that it's working. They come in and watch video, integrate what we're doing on their table, and they're like, Robert, my clients are freaking out. They're rebooking at higher rates. And I go, yes. Yes, because to a degree, you have to polarize, you have to draw people into your brand. I don't think it's necessarily good to market to everyone and for massage therapists in the industry currently. I think you're in a situation where you are trying to sell massage as a commodity and you're competing with massage envy. You can't beat massage envy on price. So how do you compete in a marketplace? Because all the consumer wants to know is like, what's the, what's the diff price difference? Because a can of corn is a commodity. Oh, but Jolly Green Giant Niblets, and you'll notice that Niblets has a trademark symbol after it, by the way, is a brand. That's the thing that I harp on consistently. I tell people I don't think they fully understand the branding process in the massage industry. I've seen it again and again, and I spend oodles of time looking at this, honing this, even honing my own message, trying to polarize the audience to figure out who are the people who buy what I'm doing. Because the people who buy what I'm doing, are they content with the massage industry? Or are the people who buy what I'm doing frustrated with the massage industry? I think it's the latter over the former. So you as a therapist, who are you selling to and what do they want? Crossfitters do not want a massage on a table necessarily that's Swedish with essential oils and soffited lighting and Enya. But we had a trademark file for Reboot. I guarantee you they'll get a Reboot. It's three hours mat based. It's the best body work on earth. Crossfitters will respond to that message. They will respond to the marketing that comes from niching down to serve targeted needs for people. You're selling a specific service networking, back to networking, with that particular audience and addressing their needs. So then when we talk about building a community, uh, if you get one CrossFitter, you're more likely to get the other CrossFitters. You get the one CrossFitter by explaining, listen, you're doing a clean and jerk, you're doing pull-ups, you're doing this. You feature that in your ad, that's a video on Facebook. You target CrossFitters. They see people in the ad that look like them doing pull-ups and struggling, getting this amazing massage and body work that helps them function doing CrossFit. It's for them. Um, I had an ad come up in my Facebook feed, which was how to optimize your subscription service. There is somebody out there 
who figured out that there are enough people running subscription services that they can make money optimizing subscription services by reaching out to me directly because I talk about a subscription service in my posts and Facebook has collated that data. That is what we are dealing with in the massage industry currently with this. This is the most potent communication tool that has ever been created. It will dwarf anything that the printing press ever did. And the printing press led to the Protestant Reformation. Um, when you're dealing with networking, you know, if you had clients who were CrossFitters, and I bring up CrossFitters regularly just because they're such a distinct group. Uh, Heidi Childers Jones is a friend and colleague that works in South Austin. Uh, she is at a CrossFit gym. She works out at a CrossFit gym. I believe she's a CrossFit trainer. She runs our time and size jam at a CrossFit gym. Within about 10 minutes, all of those CrossFitters decide that the time and size jam is their event. And they're talking to their friends about it and they're getting their friends to come and the CrossFit gym likes it because it diversifies the services that they offer and it means that we're coming in basically for free and educating their audience how to work on each other. Now, when Heidi and I go in and she's doing this education, showing these CrossFitters how to work on each other, who do the CrossFitters want to get a session with? I'll wait. Yes, that's correct, her. And what that means is she's networking with her target audience. But I think increasingly, you know, when you talk about networking, oh, how dry and boring, right? No, networking is just building a community. It's, it's talking to the people that need the service that you offer and to be able to uh, communicate with them your message about the service that you deliver and how you want to package that for them. What I can tell you is I think that the age of niche bodywork services is upon us, which means McDonald's had to create the fast food industry. McDonald's had to create the burger fry and a drink as an American standard. Then over time, what happened was you had niche artisanal burgers with microgreens and grass-fed beef that were of higher quality that they were charging 15 bucks for a burger frying a drink. But the fries are from Kennebec potatoes. They're fried in just certain kind of peanut oil because it gets at a higher smoke point, makes them more crispy. You know, we're putting truffle oil on them and then our, uh, our drinks are only with cane sugar because those facilities are branding their specific burger experience. That's what I see a lack of in the massage industry because every facility is trying to sell massage. And when you see massage, 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 it all looks the same. Then from a branding perspective, we're working on a name, we used to call it a reboot. Then in the midst of this industry where everything looks the same, I come in swinging on a suspension system, standing on clothed people, doing compressions and stuff that looks like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Wow, that really stands out. Yes, those people also happen to be clothed, which means I can film and photo document everything. Sound different? It's not about getting everybody. It's about getting your clients. It's not about networking with everybody. It's about getting your clients. It's about getting your tribe. When I spend time trying to push the massage industry open, that is a waste of my time and energy. It works much better for me to go direct to consumer, which means we hook up a phone on a tripod, press a button in my studio, and I can stream nearly worldwide. People can share this and this video can go around the world and my message could be delivered again and again and again. That is the reason that I like digital production. It's the reason that I've learned to love social media. It's the reason that I spend time on Twitter using hashtags and networking with other entrepreneurs, figuring out how to reach out to a larger market and let the public know what it is that I do. 
from a networking perspective, the networking is not just happening in person with a handshake. There's nothing wrong with that Mad Men era of marketing. There's still magazines, there's still print ads, there's still newspaper, there's still bumper stickers, there's still t-shirts and billboards, there's still you know postcards in the mail. But digital distribution is less expensive, um, it has less upfront costs, and as we expand having more mediums, it means that the marketing messages themselves change. What you would put on a billboard is different than what you'd put in a Facebook Live for your target audience, for your target network, for your targeted tribe. What are the messages? What is the story that you are telling those people? So to give you an idea, if I'm called into a networking event right now and they say, hey, Robert, who are you and what do you do? And I say, hey, guys, listen, I know a lot of you look at me like I'm the dude from the Big Lebowski. I know I should be drinking a white Russian right now, but when I was 22 years old, I was hit by a drunk driver. I took all of my free thinking as a philosophy student and turned it towards massage and body work to prevent myself from becoming a junkie. I am an expert at pain management and I help other people with their bodies through a combination of services that go from Thai massage to yoga in a trademarked service I then called a reboot. We're working on a new name. That quick elevator speech lets people decide very quickly if they want to work with me or not. That is the networking I do. And here's the thing. If 90% of the audience says, I don't like that guy, I say, okay, it's completely fine that you don't like me, but you have to not like me enough to tell other people about me. Those are the rules. If they only mildly dislike me, I'm too far in the middle and I've not polarized my message enough. Because not everybody wants me to come in and help them with chronic pain. Uh, when I worked at a chiropractor's office years ago, um, trying to explain what I would do, the facility was marketing massage. The massage looks the same as the massage at the place down the street and the place away from there and the massage empty because it's a commodity, because it's massage, because it's massage, because it's massage. I quickly learned I was the only guy in the facility. There were three or four other uh, women therapists in the building who were wonderful therapists, by the way. And if the clients did not like me, they could go to these other therapists. What I found out very quickly was the way of getting the clients that I wanted was to do the following. Hey, listen, we're going to go in and work on this mat in here because the facility finally allowed me to do that. We're going to go in and work on this mat. And they said, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, what's this mat? I don't, I don't understand what this mat thing is. And I look at them and say, listen, do you want a massage or do you want to get better? Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I want to get better. I'm like, cool. So come on in and lay down on this mat. I'm going to show you. Because I'm the expert. I'm the one who's trained for 17 years. I'm the one who's dealt with chronic pain in myself and overcome it. I'm the one who's managed my own chronic pain and helps clients manage their chronic pain. I have to be the expert and network with the people that want to network with me. Now, once I help them in a completely different way, they go, Robert, this was amazing. This is like, why isn't this available everywhere? And I go, well, uh, massage therapists are fixated on delivering a commodity. Which means if they didn't like what I did, they were just going to schedule a session with one of the other therapists who would do something more akin to what they conceive of massage as being. It's not about getting everybody. It's about building your tribe. When we talk about community, Massage Entrepreneurs is a tribe. The Reboot Insiders Club or private Facebook group is a tribe of my subscribers. My tribe is slowly building. Those tribal followers are pumping each other up and saying, yeah, your video was great. Yeah, man, I like that video you did with the music. It was great. They're promoting the practice. They're sharing their success stories as much as their failures and frustration. So that tribe is building and growing. When I think about this, um, I've mentioned these sort of things and massage therapists immediately go, oh, HIPAA violations or you know, whatever. It's like, 
what if you made a Facebook group for your clients? Work with me from a community mindset. Now, you're not going to force people to be in your group, but you're going to create a Facebook group for your clients so that your clients can talk to one another if they choose to be in the group. Now, what's the downside of you having that group? One, it's on Facebook, it's free. Two, those people are connecting with you on Facebook. Three, you can share and post some information from your business page in that Facebook group. Your clients can ask you questions about self-care or massage stuff, and then you can reply to them in the group, which means the other clients can benefit from that. And if you promote the Facebook group, it means that even potential clients could join the group, see that their friend Kathy is in the group, understand that you are their massage therapist and they feel more trust towards you. Massage therapists are not using social media for what it can do. They are not even remotely stripping out the potential for connection, the potential for networking, and the potential for community building that this device allows. This is an extremely potent communication tool. We getting any other questions? Uh, Wendy just followed up. What'd she say? Let me read it. Yeah. So Wendy, when you talk about uh, trying to change the scene uh, in that area in Colorado Springs, uh, you went to the Time Massage Jam in Denver. You see how Bradford is beginning and running his Time Massage Jam. He'll tweak that over time, just as I tweak mine and we work together. What we're really doing is we're forming a loose network that takes advantage of this, takes advantage of data collection to be able to support each other at a distance. I helped set up a funnel for Bradford. Those who are running the Time Massage Jam with me, I'm helping set up a funnel for their business, for their jam, because essentially you guys are working with me to try to scale out and build. I'm trying to use the tools that are available to me to be able to educate my target market and to be able to give them information that they can use so that we can continue to build the niche bodywork services of the future. Using the fact that the work stands out means there's polarizing going on. Polarizing is something I read some articles on recently. It started to make a little bit more sense when I saw what was going on with my social media. When I go in and talk to a group of entrepreneurs, I don't need all of those entrepreneurs to think my thing is the best thing ever. Um, Elon Musk is an entrepreneur. There are astronauts who think what Elon Musk is doing is not safe or they have issues with it and that hurts Elon's feelings. Elon. So, so what? People have differences of opinion. You don't need everyone in your tribe. And I'll tell you a quick story. So, you know, as you work as a therapist trying to find your target market clients. Um, I have a, a wonderful client named Trent. Uh, Trent comes in, he's a beach volleyball player here in the Austin area. He wants to go to the Olympics in 2020. We have as many conversations about Instagram branding, you know, sports attire as we do body work. And he, as I talk with him, he's like, man, you got to sell what you do to athletes, bro. Like, dude, athletes would lose their mind if this stuff was available. He is my target market client. He needs high-end manual therapy. He needs medical grade body work regularly to optimize his performance as an athlete. And he'll come in every week to two weeks. And we'll continue that conversation. Uh, another client when it comes to networking, when it comes to community building. I have another wonderful client. She normally drives in in her Porsche. She works in commercial real estate. The other day she had to take her other car. It was a Ferrari. 
So a Ferrari pulls up in my driveway. I deliver the session to this great client. She gives me all sorts of tips and information about commercial real estate because that's what she works in. We network, collaborate. She started telling me today she's got a chiropractor friend and an entrepreneur this, and they might want to talk to me. And that is how you build a tribe. Not everybody likes Richard Pryor. Now, immediately when you tell me you don't like Richard Pryor, I think your taste in comedians is suspect and I question you as a human. However, people who like Richard Pryor really love Richard Pryor. People who love Eddie Murphy stand-up really love Eddie Murphy. Those sorts of things mean, you know, Eminem doesn't care that you don't like his music. Does Post Malone care that there's somebody out there who's like, I hate Post Malone. He got tattoos on his face, I hate him. It doesn't matter. He makes millions of dollars because people like the music that he's putting out. He's going direct to consumer. I follow Post Malone on Instagram. Hey, by the way, Post, if you're listening, you want to get together, smoke a blunt, get a massage, happy to do that, man. Come on out, get a session. Uh, you and Cardi B, we both hang out. Um, you know, not everybody has to like you. It polarizes the audience. What doesn't polarize is completely middle of the road. Massage to me is mostly completely middle of the road. There's nothing about it that stands out because, and I will hold by this, I think that massage on the whole is a commodity and it's being sold as a commodity. When it comes to networking and community building, there is a local uh, meetup group here in Austin. That local meetup group, I think, meets periodically. I think it has limited exposure and reach. Most massage therapists are kind of busy. That's why I focused on online, like Facebook groups, and like to allow people to connect and allow me to put out information to help those therapists. I think we're in a position where people's time is limited. If they get a business card, are they going to throw it away? If they follow you on Instagram, are they going to connect with you? I'm much more likely to tell a new client, hey, are you on social media at all? And they say, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm like, sure, you should follow my Facebook business page. If you ever have any questions, feel free to write me there publicly. And they say, oh, could I message you privately? And I go, sure. The same thing will happen with Instagram. Instagram allows me, if they follow me, they can literally, from their profile, they can video message me. Hey, Robert, I was having a problem with my arm. Is there something you could show me before I get to my next session in three days? And I go, hey, Susie, sure, listen, you could take a tennis ball over here. If it's your deltoids like I think it was last time, you could just lean into that tennis ball and work on this over here with this amazing communication device that streams information nearly worldwide. Business cards, they're not bad. But the era of the business card is slowly dwarfing. It's changing. Things are developing. Uh, how many phone numbers do people now memorize? that do i memorize or uh, when's the last time you took out a paper map to try to figure out how to go somewhere the technology is changing communication which means that it's changing networking and it's changing community building um, i'm a big fan of networking generally when i saw that people wanted information about networking i'm like oh no man i have to go rub elbows with doctors and people i don't want to talk to do people are going to look down their nose and be skeptical of what i do even though i help people in chronic pain and my google reviews sound like medical grade stuff eh. you have to choose who your tribe is who do you want to work with and are those people connected you don't need everyone, you just need enough. I think it is a problem if you're trying to connect to everyone. I think that is a distinct issue. If you're trying to sell to everyone, I don't think that's a good idea, especially for a small business. A small business where you're looking for niche clients, you're looking for specific connection, with a group and a tribe of people, you're gonna to wanna to be in a position where you have a connection that's going to open doors to more connections, where networking is going to lead to more networking. Most people in my experience need massage. That's not even the issue. The challenge is massage from who? And are they actually connecting with that person? Many massage therapists I've talked to who have very successful practices actively eschew the idea of a brand. 
They get offended when I talk about massage as a commodity. They're like, not my massage. And I'm like, how successful are you? And when I find out they're very successful, I go, aha, because here's what they did. They created a personal brand. And their personal brand was so good that they never had to form a brand that they sold to the larger public and scaled out because that individual massage therapist was so good at connecting with their target clients and their target tribe that their personal brand was so solid that they didn't have to do a lot of advertising because they could connect with people. I see this in Facebook groups and people act like it's magic and I don't think it's magic. I think it's a combination of emotional, psychological factors, emotional intelligence that goes into the practice of being a massage therapist and just being better at sales. Being better at shaking hands with someone and saying, hey Roger, listen, you're having a problem with your shoulder, I really like to see you for a couple more sessions. If you have Fridays available at this time, uh, for the next two weeks they're open, I'd be happy to work with you and help you with that shoulder. Being able to do that seamlessly in a way that communicates, hey Roger, we could probably drink a beer after our session and hang out because we're buds, goes a long way to connecting with your target audience, giving them the information that they need to be able to make the decision to come see you as a therapist. That network is exceptionally important and I just try to scale it online as much as I can in addition to organically. I don't want you to think that this somehow competes with old world marketing and handshaking and chair massage. It doesn't. But look at it from this angle. Let's say you went to a facility, you decided to do chair massage. And you said, hey, it's 20 bucks for 15 minutes. But if you let me put your phone on this tripod right here and do um, an Instagram live from your account, I'll give you five bucks off. And they go, what? I'm like, yeah, I just want to run Instagram live from your Instagram account and tag myself. Or running it through your own account, meaning they're already doing the session. They're already clothed. It's already chair massage. Why wouldn't you film it and increase the reach and exposure that you have using that person's social media accounts or using your account and then tagging that person? Because that person's friends are more likely to see that post, ask who that massage therapist was, they go to your Instagram account, click on a link, get access to more links through Linktree, you develop the flow integration, put them through your funnel, give them a free workbook, whatever it is that you offer as your free giveaway for your email list. You are building an email list, right? You notice how I'm still stacking between like in-person networking and digital networking? I really think that they're the same thing. Um, I worked with a much older uh, gentleman yesterday. He was born, I think, at 45. And as we had a conversation, he's been trying to get me to come to a local networking event, but we haven't been able to work out the schedule yet. As we talked about it, um, he's retired, and I talked about the process that he went through in his business of like building and investing and then building towards retirement. And I explained to him that I deal with social media so much, I feel like people feel like, you know, like he doesn't use social media, but he's retired. If anything, his social skills are so good, if he started using social media, he would use social media in almost an old school way, which means he would be actively giving people value and information. He would be personable and friendly. You know, I regularly write people who leave comments on my Facebook page or elsewhere, and they say, hey, I'm having a problem with such and such. And I say, hey, Susie, listen, here's a YouTube video. I think this may answer your question. If this doesn't answer your question, feel free to inbox me. I'd be happy to even do like a Facebook Live with you where I bring you on camera and we work on it. Now, you'll notice that I did not sell that. What is my financial incentive to do that? The financial incentive is if I do that 100 times, 10 of those people are going to become clients and I'm going to make $1,000 for that $100 session that I do 10 times. That's how it works, that's how it works, that's how it works. When I put out information on Facebook, I am not focusing on the fact that somebody's in New Hampshire, they can't come get a session. Here's what I realized a long time ago. 
It's the modern world. People have trains, they have phones, they have you know planes, they can fly, they go on vacation, they have friends, families, cousins who live in Texas and they say, listen, you gotta go see this guy Robert, I follow him on YouTube or whatever. If you guys have any other questions about, in this case it was about networking primarily, if you have any other questions, please write those down below. For some reason, it was not pulling up uh, the chats so that I could answer your questions live. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those after the fact and spend time this evening going over those, answering those in as much detail as I can. I'll also provide links to other resources if I know of those. Uh, feel free to also make me aware of other links and things I should know about. But. Thank you guys so much for our presentation. Uh, follow up in the Reboot Insiders Club. Oh, um, also if you are in the Reboot Insiders Club, if you've subscribed to our subscription service, we're about to go live there for another hour. Uh, they wanted to talk about social media marketing specifically, which we kind of touched on. If you want to subscribe to the Reboot Insiders Club, it's rgwellness.teachable.com. There's a link right up above. Um, that's seven bucks a month. Also, our retail package, I held up one of the DVDs. I only wrote 700 pages of sequence manuals and nine DVDs that you can purchase. They just walk you through the sequence. We added the subscription on top of this to kind of document more in real time how sessions flow and what I'm doing working with clients. We continue to hash out more detail in our private subscription service to be able to help the ther therapist as quickly and easily and affordably as possible kind of build uh, their own practice at this stage. That's mat based, working towards mat based. I work on a table as well, uh, showing them that to kind of transition them to the mat. But but if you have any questions at all, just write down below. I'll answer those as I can. I'll also be sharing this video around um, uh, through various Facebook groups so other people can benefit from your questions that they see here. Don't think that it's a, dis a disadvantage when you ask questions or no dumb questions. It just allows me to refine what it is I'm teaching and why because a lot of people are going to have the same questions you do. So thank you guys so much for the presentation today. I'm happy to do these and we're probably going to be doing these a little bit more frequently. I'll be in touch with you uh, through my social media about when we're going to do that. We may eventually set up where we have a more consistent schedule to do these so that you can come live and ask questions anytime you'd like. But thank you so much and you guys have a great day. I really appreciate you and thank you for liking my Facebook page, Robert Gardner Wellness. We finally got the 10K likes.